How's it? Good morning. I'm walking backwards so I'll get the, the good lights from over there. We're one week into a training camp here in Fuerteventura. We're here with the national team, one of the Canary Islands, and we're on the sport resort of Platas. And I actually started off a bit sick. I've been sick ever since I left South Africa and I was sick for over a week. Just got healthy the days before we came down here. So the first day was very easy, but the past three, four days, I've been able to push quite hard. Today I feel sore everywhere. Therefore I'm gonna give a few tips on how to overcome a tired body in the water because just over an hour we're gonna do a suffer fest in a pool, a really hard swim session and when you have a tired and heavy body it can be quite hard to uh, perform in the water. Therefore I'm gonna give you my, hopefully it will be five tips on how to overcome this. Tip number one out of five is obviously this guy right here, the caffeine, the coffee. Seven days into a camp, caffeine will make wonders. Especially when you're gonna push yourself hard in the pool. Caffeine, coffee is just, it's like black gold. And I can promise you it will help you to perform better. So take one, two, three cups. I usually take one before the practice and then I'm good to go. So that's tip number one. And tip number two out of five is mobility. This is, it's getting real now. It's a very crucial one. Before every session, I like to just swing my arms like this. When your body is really tired, then it's even more important to get in deeper into your muscles. These are two of my mobility sessions before a hard swim set. After a couple of days of training, we tend to get very stiff, especially triathletes. And triathletes were not really known to have the best swimming mobility as it is. So this is something I'm trying to work on a lot, but Especially after hard swim sessions like this. This one, this stretch does is it opens up your hip flexors and it opens up your upper back and then also your sides. And those three are three very important parts of your body that you want good mobility in when you're swimming. And then we have tip number three out of five. And this one is also important on the dry land before. And it's the activation of a certain muscle groups. For me personally, I like to activate my core. A lot of static core, like the plank, the side plank. So the core is important and then also activate the arms or the upper back. Activating the core really helps your swimming a lot, especially when you're tired. When you're moving through the water, you want to be as fixed as possible and you want to be control of your, your legs and your arms and everything runs through your core. So if you're strong there and if you feel like you're activated, that will help you a lot. And with that said, I don't think you want to do too much because you don't want to get tired. You just want to do a couple of seconds on each exercise just so you start feeling them. And I do these exercises because I like them and I feel like everything is better than nothing. I'm not just trying to activate my core, also upper body obviously, arms, back, and this one helps specifically to find the catch, warms you up a bit, saves your shoulders, and this one helps you a lot just to find the right sensation in the water lately. Important to have your elbow high all the time, do maybe 10 on each side, and then the shoulders, obviously, the same thing here, 10 on each side. There we go. That's the things I used to do, usually do on the on the dry land. And honestly, obviously, I feel very active and I feel ready to go. And as you can see, the whole Swedish squad are, well, now they're preparing to get in the water. But all of us have been doing this. Hopefully, we will all have a fast and nice swim. The warm up on land is done. We're in the water during the warm up. Today's session is it's not very long, but it's still very demanding. We're gonna start off with. Uh, 100 meter, maximum sprint all out, a long wrist, and then do a 350s with the same, uh, the same thing. Maximum effort with a lot of rest in between. Therefore, tip number four is a very good warm up. And it doesn't really matter what session you do. If you're tired, if your body is sore, 
the more warm the better. I think Richard Varga once said that if you feel tired, then you just increase the warm-up so you can do the hard stuff later. The warm-up today is a very long one. We're doing uh, 1,500 meters and we're mixing up, mixing, mixing up everything. Normal swimming, kicking as we're doing now, lots of drills. And then at the end, uh, some uh, slightly higher speeds to activate the muscles and get the, get the heart rate up. And the key here is just to take it easy. Don't go out too hard, pace yourself. Make sure you're getting warm so you can do the right thing later. And tip number five, already started, I did my first hundred and I kicked Patrick's ass. Time was slow, but it was a good sensation in the water. The speed just isn't there yet. Anyway, tip number five is to surround yourself with a good squad. Everybody's not swimming today, but over there we have the whole Swedish team and we're pushing each other. I had Patrick Nielsen, Mr. 748. And I beat his ass, so that felt very good. No, jokes aside. That's five tips how to prepare for a hard swim set when you're when you're tired. And I would say that tip number two, three, and four is very, very important. Make sure you have the right mobility in your body. Make sure you activate the right muscles and do a proper warm-up. Bam! And then Coffee is good and, and good people is good, but I know that can be hard to find sometimes. But here we are. All right, like I said, that was the first 100 done. Now we have 350s, sprinting all out. It's a lactic acid party. Arm sucking, legs are hurting. But we have each other to push each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's uh, round up this. Parte. One last thing, um, we're living in a pretty celebrity close, I don't know what you call it, but there's a lot of ce celebrities in here. And this is our roommate's room and we have uh, Gabriel who is uh, covering up his underwear because he's <laughs> naked as usual. <laughs> Multiple Swedish champ on sprint and Olympic distance and that's the guy both me and Oscar are trying to beat but it's nearly impossible. But it is possible because I know. And then we have uh, Mr. Patrick Nilsson, Mr. Uh, Seven... Uh, 49. 49. 49. And he also finished 8th in Ironman World Champs in Kona last year. So, decent, decent caliber. Since he's here, and I know a lot of people is inter interested in him, I thought I'll do a little interview. How how will this interview work? I think if you write your questions just below, I will try to answer them together with Ludwig tomorrow. And then of course, if you want to follow this awesome blog, just click on the link. And if you want to see the other videos, yes. See them on the side. See you tomorrow. Well, it's not actually tomorrow, but whenever we have time, I will do this. Soon enough, there will be an awesome interview with Mr. Patrick Nielsen. That's all from us here today. Good night. See you. Ciao. Bye.